Have you ever wondered how to use ChatGPT to actually make money? A lot of people are doing it, like this kid who made a million dollars, quote unquote, stealing from ChatGPT, as this case study says here, courtesy of capitalmindset.co. And so this is a pretty cool case study that goes into if you use ChatGPT effectively, you can really, really profit from it. And I use ChatGPT for writing sales emails, writing sales copy, squeeze pages, courses, eBooks, anything you can think of if you know how to use it right, ChatGPT can be a big help, saving you lots of time, lots of money, and in many cases, it can actually do a better job than an average person can at these tasks. But if you don't know how to use it effectively, you're not gonna get very far because you need to know all about prompt engineering, which is the practice of writing what are called prompts. Prompts are all the little things that you ask ChatGPT or the instructions you give it to try to prompt it to give you stuff back. If you know how to do it right, you can produce the best results that give you exactly what you're trying to produce. If you don't, you kind of get garbage. And in fact, they sound a little bland, a little boring, a little bit like a high schooler wrote an essay, right? So if you give ChatGPT bad generic prompts, then you're going to get bad generic output like the high school essay style results. And what better way to learn how to use ChatGPT than from the creators of ChatGPT themselves, and that's OpenAI. And OpenAI actually wrote up a full prompt engineering guide. It's meant for developers like me who build software, right? So we build software using AI tools. This was an incredible detailed and very technical guide. So for an average user, it's probably a bit confusing, but there's marketing gold hidden inside this guide. So I had my team and I here at Push Button AI, we went through this technical guide and we handpicked seven techniques that anybody could use to go from a complete beginner to a chat GPT pro. And this is the guide I'm talking about here. This is a part of the developer documentations. And it's all about prompt engineering. It's a pretty lengthy and robust guide. We'll drop a link to it in the description of this video if you wanna read the entire full thing, but it's pretty detailed, pretty lengthy, and a bit technical. So I'm gonna shortcut it and give you the seven most powerful things that we can learn from it. Let's get started. Technique number one, that is to include details in your query to get more relevant answers. This means if you have details and things specific that you wanna get out of it, you need to not assume that ChatGPT is gonna get it right. And they give you some examples here, like how do I add numbers in Excel? That's not a good prompt. Instead, how do I add up a row of dollar amounts in Excel? I want to automatically for a whole sheet of rows with the totals ending on the right in a column total, right? See how different that is? So the more specific you can make the prompt, don't make it bland and simple. Get into the details. Technique number two, ask the model to adopt a persona. So at the very beginning of my prompt, I tell ChatGPT essentially who I want it to be. And imagine being an expert in every career, you know, having knowledge in every field, having just knowing all the trivia facts about anything everywhere all at once. And so you need to really get ChatGPT to not be schizophrenic and to know who it should be when it's answering your questions. It sounds a little weird, almost a little metaphysical, but I find it really valuable. So I'll start it off by saying to, hey, ChatGPT, act as, and then I'll tell it, an expert in this field, or work as this, you know, be this. And I tell it very specifically that persona that I want it to adopt. And it considers that when it looks into its vast knowledge and comes back with an answer that will help guide it so you don't get irrelevant or facts that just don't apply to your unique situation that you're looking for. Make sense? So we'll move on to technique number three, and that is to use what they're calling delimiters. And let me explain what a delimiter is. Basically anything that's going to limit or stop a sentence, think of like a, a period, and there are many others. I'll give you some examples of these, but it's something used in punctuation or otherwise to indicate where something stops and a new thing might begin. Sometimes like, for example, if I'm working with keywords, I'll use what ChatGPT calls them triple quotes, just three quotes in a row. I'll show you some examples of this in a minute. And I wrap my keywords with that. Or let's say that I'm asking ChatGPT to rewrite something. I need to very clearly tell it and show it what I'm trying to get it to rewrite. So it does not confuse that with my instructions. So you have your instructions and then separately you might have data or information 
And you wanna make it really clear with the way you're using punctuation and the way you mark these different sections as being unique and different and independent from one another. Let's say you wanna give ChatGPT a transcript of a YouTube video. You can indicate what part of the prompt is the transcript by using quotation marks. Now, in their document, they suggest using triple quotes. So let me show you that. So here's the using text delimiter. So here's an example right there. And you can just see it's just three sets of quotes around the text that you're using. Technique number four, and that is to specify the steps. I see people, they'll go to ChatGPT and they'll ask it to do something in one shot and say, hey, ChatGPT, write me an article about underwater cats that fish. And this really should be broken down into a multitask thing. So let me explain this. When a human is gonna sit down to write an article about cats that fish underwater, there really are fishing cats, by the way. If you were gonna sit down and write that, First, you would need to research about it. Then you would need to make an outline of what you're gonna put in your article. And then you need to figure out section by section and write that article in multiple pieces. So that would be broken down into multiple steps. This is, this is the biggest place I see people go wrong. They don't break things down into multiple steps. And I understand you want the magic of AI to just do it for you. But right now you have to specify those steps and work with ChatGPT a step at a time. Right there, specify the steps required to complete a task. And here they're actually showing the steps in one prompt. Step one, step two, all in one prompt. For me, what I like to do is I will actually break them up and I will ask it to do each piece, each step one at a time separately in the same chat window. I find I get better results there, but you can do it like this too, where you actually list the steps out for ChatGPT in the, just all in one prompt. On to technique number five, and that is to provide examples. Now you can get really good with ChatGPT if you give it examples of what you want back. So if you just leave it up to ChatGPT, who knows what it's gonna do? It could come out in any way. But if you give it examples of what you're looking for, then it's gonna understand a lot better. And for those examples, don't forget, use the delimiters like we talked about earlier. You could say, here are a couple examples of what I'm looking for. Here in provide examples, this is talking about a technical way that way we use it as programmers in the back end. But this applies to using the normal chat GPT interface as well. The next thing that I'll go on to is technique number six. This one, I'm not sure that I completely agree with this one, I'll be honest, but this is what they're telling us at OpenAI, and that is, <laughs> there you go, technique number six, and that is to specify the desired length of the output. So the results you get back, how long do you want it to be? I have had limited success with this, just to be honest. But again, this is what ChatGPT is telling us that we should be doing. So probably I would anticipate that it's gonna get better and better at this. But I'll often find if I ask it to give me 500 words of content, it doesn't ever come out to be around 500. But try this and see how that works. Specify the desired length of the output. And one example here is 50 words. So they ask for 50 words of content or two paragraphs or three bullet points. So personally, what I find is it can do okay at smaller numbers, examples like this. The minute I start asking it for like something that's a couple of hundred words or a thousand words, it seems to get lost and it's well on the way and forget how many words it's supposed to be doing. I do anticipate it will get better at that, but you know, I think this works really well for smaller numbers of things and like those examples. And then moving on to our final technique, that is technique, here, I gotta do this, <laughs> technique number seven, as I knock my microphone over, <laughs> that is to split complex tasks into simpler subtasks. It's kind of similar to something like uh, uh, one of our earlier steps, but it's a bit different. It's a little nuanced, so, so pay attention to this. ChatGPT, it can get confused when you ask it to do multiple things at once. Like if you remember before, when it said to show us steps, step by step, and it gave those examples of step one, do this, step two, do that, and they submitted it in one prompt. But it works far better when you combine that with what we're talking about now, and that is to break your task into smaller subtasks and have it do it one at a time. In that example I gave of an article, right? The first is to do a little bit of research, then is to outline the article, then 
is to write each section one at a time. And then it's to combine it all together and give you a good article, right? So I would do each of those steps manually, one at a time in ChatGPT. This is an example of why my product, Push Button AI, is so valuable. That's what we're doing behind the scenes, is that we're working with not just ChatGPT, but many different AI tools, and we're going one step at a time, but we automate it for you. So where you might sit in front of ChatGPT and have to do 17 steps to get a great article, you just come to our tool and you put it in one time and pop, we do all that work. So we break it up, we chunk it into pieces, we work with the different tools to get what you need out of it step by step by step. And that's why it comes out so good. But if you're gonna do it manually, you can go to ChatGPT and again, just break it into those steps. Someone might go to ChatGPT and say, hey, write me a book. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen people try to do this and they'll get a book. It'll be short, it'll be fairly generic and not that great, right? But instead, you're gonna do a whole book. First, you'd have to do a research step and then you could summarize what the book should be about and the key parts, break down the chapters, then you break down each chapter into multiple sections and then you write each section one at a time. That is the seven steps that we picked out or the seven techniques that we picked out for you. But if you go to this document written by OpenAI, you're gonna find a lot more than these seven techniques that we just went over. But if you're getting started, if this is you're new to ChatGPT, you haven't really used it a lot yet, these seven steps are all you need to get started. I'm gonna drop a link in the description if you'd like to check out the full guide and a little more information from us on how to use it. Jump into our newsletter, join our newsletter, it's totally free. And then not only will we give you the guide and more feedback on how to use it, but you'll continue getting content from us like this week after week after week. On that note, I wanna remind you that Push Button AI does all of this. So it will build you an entire business step by step. And you know how I said to break things down step by step? It'll do 177 steps, one at a time, one by one, and build your entire business for you. Launch it online, register you a domain name, install a website, take care of the hosting, and then hand you the keys. And if you'd like to learn more about that, then you definitely want to check out Pushbutton AI. You can go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to learn more about that. And that book wraps us up on this subject. If you got value out of this, make sure you tap that like button and let YouTube know that this content was worth the time. So then YouTube will share it with more and more and more people. I'll be eternally grateful. And then make sure you subscribe. You'll see a red subscribe button down there. Tap it. Make sure you set your notifications to always on and then you'll get content from us all throughout the week on how to use AI tools like ChatGPT and so much more when it comes to building and growing your business as an entrepreneur. And until then, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. So for those of you who are not yet a Push Button AI customer, then you need to check this out. And all you need to do is go to pushbutton.ai slash demo, pushbutton.ai slash demo, and you can get a live one-on-one -on -one appointment to get on Zoom and see this powerful technology in action. And with Push Button AI, it will build an entire business from bottom to top everything you need from your domain name to your logo to videos to audio lessons an entire course that you can sell as your own a 30-day email sequence and it writes you can send a daily email for 30 days all written by ai and a whole lot more it writes your sales page if you're not sure how to write an expert sales page to convince people to buy stuff it writes it for you it writes a free report that you can give away to get subscribers to your list. It even creates and writes the opt-in subscription page to get people to subscribe to get the free report. And it goes on and on and on. It even writes your first 10 blog posts for you and it can do so much more. Social media posts, ads, all of these things are done and all you have to do is answer a couple of questions and push a button. Now, Push Button AI is not available to the public at the time of recording this video. And the only way to get in is by invite to our behind the scenes beta access. And during your live demo, we'll show you the technology. We'll actually work with you to actually map out an entire course that you could sell as your own. We'll outline the course with you together on the one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And then if you so decide, if you're a good fit, you can come in, join our Push Button AI beta program and be in business with that very course by the next day. 
Go to pushbutton.ai slash demo to figure out if this powerful technology is right for you. You can register there. there. You'll book an appointment in the calendar. Be sure you show up. Our team will be very excited to meet you and show you how the tech works, outline your new course for you, and hopefully it's a fit and we can work together to launch your next business.